The following program is produced locally at Woodburn Community Access Television. Walk at 5, Woodburn. Scott Rorig, I'm the president of the Woodburn Area Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all here tonight to the 2005 Distinguished Service Awards Banquet. I want to thank you for taking the time and the effort to be here to honor those who have done so much to make Woodburn such a nice place to be. Please allow me to take a moment to introduce some of the special folks that are here tonight. Representative Betty Kopp. <laughs> Marion County Commissioner Sam Brentano. <laughs> <clears throat> Marion County Commissioner Janet Carlson. <laughs> Mayor of this fine city of Woodburn, Mayor Kathy Figley. Former Mayor Dick Jennings. <laughs> City Council Member Pete McCollum. <laughs> City Council Member Walt Nichols. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And will all the past recipients of the DSA Awards please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Including you, Scott. Thank you for what you've done for the city of Woodburn and the area. And thank you all those of you that have not been officially recognized for all that you do. <clears throat> we uh, appreciate that all your efforts have made Woodburn such a good place to be a part of. <clears throat> now I'd like to introduce Nick Harville, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, who will be our master of ceremonies for this evening. Good evening, and thank you all for coming. Thanks to everybody from uh, Country Meadows for the good job that they've done. Let's give them a round of applause, Cynthia and Jacob. <laughs> this is a wonderful community event. Uh, we have the annual dinner every year, which we recognize members at, but this is a community event where people are nominated by the community and, and voted on and selected by the community. So I think it's a great, great event that we have each year. Um, there is one addition that I have to introduce. Some of you already know. Um, we have a new staff person, and her name is Kim Geiger. She is the new administrative assistant. Kim? It's my job tonight to introduce the presenters of our awards this evening. And the first one is uh, our special award. And to present that is uh, one of my board members, John Hoffman from Jervis Telephone, and one of our sponsors for the night. The recipient of the DSA Special Award once showed up drunk to work for So and Sons Forging and Machine Shop. <laughs> Fortunately, instead of firing him, owner Mike Soa said, go home and sober up, you're a better man than to hide in a bottle. That young man was Richard Butler, 
a Woodburn native who lived the life of a tough guy and never saw a beer he didn't like. In high school, Richard loved sports. He participated in track and in his, uh, the sport of his passion, wrestling. At the Oregon State High School Wrestling Championship in 1966, uh, he came in second, having lost by a score of only two to one. Recreational sports with his friends was prominent in his years after graduation. Richard worked at a ladder factory in Woodburn. He hauled trash for United Disposal, and all that was before showing up at the door of So and Sons. After he, uh, his life took a fall in the 1970s, he found God, and he also found Salem Bible College. And by 1983, he committed his life to shepherding Christians and spreading the gospel. In 1991, Richard became senior pastor of the Faith Christian Fellowship Church. And this is a man who inspires others by the way he turned his own life around and by the example he sets. He was a volunteer chaplain for the Woodburn area Marion County Police Departments for about nine years. He's a member of the Woodburn Ecumenical Council, and he's an ardent supporter of Woodburn High School athletics. Describing himself, Rich says, what you see is what you get. I'm not about fanfare, I'm not an orator, I just love people. His greatest joy is to see people loving each other, enjoying life as God meant it. As another friend said, he walks the walk. Please join me in honoring Richard Butler. I see they put me first because preachers are long-winded, so they thought I'd have to be short, and that way everybody can get a chance to speak. That was nice of them. I didn't get you for that. But anyhow, um, I am so blessed. Um, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I mean, I got people I look out in that audience that I love me and that have uh, prayed for me and have uh, cared a lot about me when I was doing a lot of things that weren't really pleasing to people and to God. But you know, I just thank all of you that made this happen, that voted for me, that submitted my name. Uh, Dick Jennings showed up, Mayor Dick Jennings, prior Mayor Dick Jennings, showed up in my church and wanted to talk to me, and the paper was gonna come out on Tuesday, this is Monday, and I said, what about? And I said, I'm going out to the coast for two days, take a break. And, Finally, he said, I've got to tell you something. So he calls the chamber and said, tell him right now. And I said, Dick, I said, there's other people that are probably more deserving of this than me. And he says, it's your time. I said, okay. I received that. So I want to thank all of you. And uh, I was thinking that all those pictures of us that received the award come out in the paper on March 1st. And uh, my mom and dad would really have loved to have seen that. And... Um, Eleven days later, article came out in the paper, and it had local raids, net drugs, guns, 15 arrested, and it had pictures, and it wasn't for the Lord, it wasn't for people like Al Egg and the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast people that prayed for me and loved me. That could have been my name there, but instead I got a week earlier in the paper that I'm getting an award, and I'm, I'm just humbled, and I just thank you so much, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Our next award is Service Organization Member of the Year, and to do that presentation, we have Daryl Mendenhall. Well, unfortunately, our recipient tonight 
couldn't be here. He has some pressing matters that he has to take care of. So I'll not only be making the presentation, but I get to accept it on Don's behalf also. <laughs> but Don Hope, well, unfortunately, he can't be here. Don's absence in no way diminishes his contribution to our community. Since I came to Woodburn some 30 years ago, Abby's Pizza Parlor has always been a gathering place for families. And I have lots of warm memories of going to Abby's after Little League baseball games, basketball games, football games, with our family and our kids, The Abbey's people, they just laughed at us. They cleaned up our mess while we spilled our drinks and we dropped our food, and we just kept on having fun. Abbey's has been a traditional meeting place for families for many, many years. And all of us from Woodburn, Hubbard, Jervis, and North Marion area, we appreciate the fact that Don Hope keeps a clean, respectable and safe place where families can get together and just have fun. Now, some of Don's personal accolades are Don is the past president of the French Prairie Kiwanis Club. Don is still an active member of his club. He works on all the club projects from cooking eggs at the 4th of July chuck wagon breakfast to putting out American flags on area businesses during holidays. Don is also a constant contributor to school fundraisers and to our community projects. And to borrow a line from Ted Ory and quote his fellow Kiwanian, Don Hope is one of those people who make things better for others in lots of ways. And he is just a nice person. So Don, we wish you could have been in here in person to accept your award tonight. But on your behalf, I accept this service organization award. And I thank you, Don, for all of the work that you do for our community. Thank you. So, John, how are you going to get this picture? <laughs> Our next award is Outstanding Farmer of the Year. It's my honor to introduce Bob and Jean Fessler to make that presentation. We'd like to present uh, to thank uh, the chamber for selecting John and Karen Paul Schneider for the Outstanding Farmer of the Year. Uh, John and Karen have been in business over in the French Prairie Road. It's halfway between Woodburn and St. Paul for the last 30 years. They also have the French uh, Prairie Garden Center for the last 10 years. And you don't know what you're missing if you don't go over there and buy some of their fruits and, and, and vegetables and bakery now. They're in the bakery, uh, which they have a, if you want to check and, and, and see what they all do, get on their website. Uh, they're on the French Prairie um, Garden website. Uh, John and, and Karen have been in real active in, in many uh, different organizations through the years, and some of them are, so many I have to read it. <laughs> uh, they belong to St. Uh, Paul Catholic Church, 
can serve the John serves the finance committee council and also uh, on the uh, cemetery committee uh, they belong to the St. Paul Rodeo Association served as parade chair for the past 20 years St. Paul Booster Club past board members and help a chair resurfacing the high school uh, track uh, John has been past director of the Wilco Farmers for 19 years, also chairman for, I don't know, several years. Also members of the chamber is Karen, served in the Tourist Alliance Committee. They're involved in educational programs for young people to learn about Oregon ag agriculture. John and Karen have continually supported Oregon agriculture for the last 30 years. They just have involved more things than I've even mentioned. Uh, their family's involved in the farming, uh, especially during harvest time. They have five children, uh, Emily, Katie, and Stacy, and two sons, Scott and Eric, uh, and two grandsons. Eric, is a partner with Stacy and is returned after college to help uh, doing their advertising on their uh, garden. And um, I'd like to present to you uh, John and Karen Postnatter. I'd like to thank the chamber for this honor. Uh, it's a big surprise for Karen and I, and it's <clears throat> really an honor to be presented this from uh, Bob and Jean Fessler. I mean, uh, I'm a little guy compared to them, and uh, I wish I could get my place as clean as theirs. We're getting there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, life was easy. Uh, I have about 500 acres I raised grass seed, and that was going along pretty good. And, and then we decided 10 years ago, well, the sons want to be on the farm, and well, let's, let's start a proto, a proto stand. Why did we do that, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's a lot of work, and uh, being farmers, you have to have a passion for it, and Karen and I do have the passion for it. We got some kids, our own kids help us out. The son, Eric, is in the farm with us. Stacy's helping us out, and they all come back and help during pumpkin patch when we need the help. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of farmers that are probably better than we are. Of course, we're in St. Paul, it's very competitive. <laughs> and, uh, but the way I look at it is, you know, if, if you're still talking to your banker, you're doing good. <laughs> and I've done it for 30 years. <laughs> Thanks again. The next award is uh, Junior First Citizen, and to make that presentation is last year's recipient, Craig Kristoff. Hi, it's my honor this year to, to introduce this year's Junior First Citizen, I do stress junior, um, Bob Rhodes. Bob is the son of Burke and Janet Rhodes, and he is married to Tracy and has two wonderful children, Jabez and Xander. I've been trying to think of how to best to describe Bob. I guess the best way would be to compare him to one of his favorite neckties. See, Bob is a closet VeggieTales fan. For those of you who don't know what VeggieTales is, it's a Christian-based cartoon about the adventures of a vegetable named Larry the Cucumber and his friends. All the stories have a good moral lesson to them. First and foremost, Bob Rhodes loves the Lord. Like Larry the Cucumber, he is always an example to, to those around him of how to live an honest and morally solid life. 
Bob serves as the junior high youth ministry leader at Day Springs Church in Salem. It has, it has been said that this is a position that Bob manages well, since he has been fortunate enough to still think like a junior high student, <laughs> but maintain that rare quality of being able to lead and identify with young people. His wit and humor is entertaining and enlightening, and he is a joy to be around no matter what age you are. Another lesson learned from our friend Larry the Cucumber is how to serve others. Bob has been strongly involved in the French Prairie Kiwanis Club since 2001. He is a past president and for the last five years has served as the club's liaison for the Cub Scout Pack 152. He is also the French Prairie Builders Club representative to French Prairie Middle School. He has served as Chamber Vice President, Ambassador for the Business After Hours and Greeters programs, a chair for the Chamber's annual dinner, fundraising chair for Relay for Life. He is co-chairs of the annual Chuck Wagon Breakfast, sponsor of Youth Ball Association and the Senior States Ladies Golf Tournament. Bob has served our country for three years in the Navy and, and many other numerous things that I, I can't have the time to mention. Bob's deep faith and commitment to family and community serves him well in demonstrating what he believes in. The community is the benefactor of his time and talent. In conclusion, Bob is a lot like the characters on his VeggieTale tie. He is funny, witty, a teacher, a leader, and he's loved by both young and old. Plus, we all know that vegetables are good for us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Junior First Citizen, Bob Rose. It's amazing to think that young Craig Kristoff introduced me. He was in my youth group <laughs> when I served at the United Methodist Church. That's very, very cool. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. To be recognized for serving seems to compete even for the reason for serving. I'm very grateful to receive this award, grateful to the community for the opportunities that have given to me, but also grateful to the individuals that have shaped, honed, reshaped, and modeled before me. I'd like to mention just a few of those. My parents, Burke and Janet, just celebrated 50 years of serving each other in marriage. Very grateful for that. My wife, who over the last dozen years has followed me to all these various junior high, senior high, youth events, I can remember my mom working with ladies in our church doing missionary support work. I learned a lot about serving just growing up in the Woodburn United Methodist Church here in town. Pauline Neal, my Sunshine Choir Director. Yes, I was in a choir. It wasn't any good, but I was in it. That's how nice Pauline is. And then later, she was my high school youth leader. Remember some, as you look through the lists, you'll think a lot of people in there um, have really uh, influenced my life uh, that have been uh, junior first citizens, senior first citizens, service member organizations, all those different kinds of things. Uh, and just to name a few, uh, Keith and Billy Joe Sadler were my youth leaders in junior high, John Genter, my pastor, that was really great to work with. I remember one time after youth group or in the middle of youth group, Bob, settle down. <laughs> Elton and Peggy Clark, John Stegan, who, by the way, taught me how to water ski and gave me the love of that sport, was a Sunday school teacher of mine. Betty Donnelly, that put up with my shenanigans. Ernie Livesey, Tom Tyler, Bob Engel, and the list goes on and on of people in this community that have modeled and invested in me. But what really made me realize what serving was all about was one July day in 1982 while flying a small plane. I wasn't flying it, but Dave Buck, my high school friend, was. And I realized then, it, with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, your life becomes just one great big thank you for all he's done for you. And that's what I learned from that friend. Paul the Apostle said it best, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. 
I, like my friend Rich, and I'm so glad I did not get introduced like he did. <laughs> because I could have been. <laughs> I've experienced incredible grace in my life. My greatest joy really is to serve young people. Through my involvement in French Prairie Kiwanis, I've got to know some wonderful men and women that are all about serving young people. I'm very, very proud to be associated with that club. My life was changed by the investment of significant adults taking an interest in me. If I have a challenge for you, my encouragement is that you might invest in the lives of young people the way significant adults have invested in me. Thank you very much. I'm very, very grateful. Our final award this evening is the Senior First Citizen of the Year, and to make that presentation is Ward Hirschberger. I don't even know where to start, you know. Don Judson. I had this about a seven or eight page thing that was given to me and it told me all about the things that Don's done, been involved in and all this kind of stuff and I said I don't think everybody wants to be here that long so I'm just going to cut it real short, tell you a couple things and then Don can fill in the blanks maybe. Don's been married to Rhonda for about 30 years, has two sons, a couple of grandchildren. He's been involved in the banking industry for 30 years, starting as a management trainee, working right on up to the top. The last stop is Mid Valley Bank, where he's considered a gift and devoted leader by his employees. Yeah. <laughs> when he moved to Woodburn, he got involved in the community, Woodburn Chamber of Commerce, where he helped to move it up to the next level. He serves on committees for the City of Woodburn, Woodburn School District, and for North Lamont Valley Habitat. He's been involved in Rotary, French Prairie Historical Society, served on many boards including United Way, Salem Salvation Army, Woodburn Salvation Army, Women's Crisis Service, Marion County Economic Development Advisory member of the Woodburn United Methodist Church and holds lay leadership roles there. He has coached youth softball and basketball in Salem. <coughs> Beavers. What more is there to say? Obsessive OSU alumni and fan, huh? <laughs> Here's a couple of quotes that I uh, just wrote down for some of the stuff. It says, Don has given of his time and energy to promote, preserve, and lead Woodburn into the future. Don is a true visionary, both at work and in the community. Don went above and beyond as he challenged his employees to raise money for Relay for Life. And he didn't duck out. Don can fill you in about the ducks there, you know. Don is gifted and devoted leader in the Woodburn community. Don's leadership, hard work, and recognition of business positive influences on the community make him most deserving person for this award. Don has been one of the true leaders of change in the Woodburn community. What's next, Don? Golf? Grandkids, Rhonda, <laughs> let's welcome Don.
I am truly humbled to be receiving this award that has gone to giants in this community. Dick Jennings, my friend and personal role model, Dave Kristoff, Ward Hirschberger, Scott. These people have served this community for a long time. And I've only been here a few years. My resume is sort of slim. I'm wondering what you guys were thinking, but <laughs> bankers never turn anything down for free, so we're going to keep on going. <laughs> there are several people I'd like to thank for this award, starting with the ones who brought me here in the first place. About nine years ago, a group of local business people decided it was time for Woodburn to once again have its own bank. And they spent months looking for somebody who was crazy enough to take this job on. We've had a lot of challenges in, in our eight years. But the measure of their success is very simple. The last two banks that started in Woodburn, the Bank of Oregon and Woodburn State Bank, failed. They were purchased by out-of-state banks before they went bankrupt. Mid Valley Bank has the good fortune to be acquired by a very good bank at almost four times our original investment in seven years. Now, if the rest of my stocks had done that well, I'd be playing golf a lot earlier than I'm going to be playing in the next few months. <laughs> we have two of our founding directors here tonight, Marion County Commissioner Sam Brentano and Bob Fessler. Let's give them a hand. They're only my bosses for a few more months, but it doesn't hurt just to give them a little bit of applause. <laughs> this dream we had about a bank would not have happened without the most incredible group of people to ever be my privilege to work with. I want to pay special tribute to one person who you may have met but don't really know how key she has been to Mid Valley Bank's success. She's been my right arm for almost the entire time we've operated this bank. She basically ran the bank from the inside while I went out and did my fun stuff that you're talking about tonight. And she doesn't get a lot of recognition. She stays behind the scenes. Well, tonight, I want to publicly recognize my chief operating officer, Connie Kemp. Would you stand up? <laughs> The hardest thing for me when agreeing to sell this bank is giving up my day-to-day -day contact with these people. These guys are awesome. This is not the last time I'm going to talk about them, but let's give them all a round of applause. We have two sons we're very proud of. Our oldest son, Don, and his family were here earlier. However, he, in about a week, is starting a new job at the veterinary hospital in that fantastic institution in Corvallis. He was there all day today training. He had to go home tonight because he has to work from 1 to 8 at the emergency veterinary clinic in Salem. So he and his grandkids have gone home. We're very, very proud of Don. He earned his biology degree from Willamette after surviving cancer. And that's why we're so passionate about the Relay for Life. Our youngest son, Chris, who graduated from, you can probably guess, Oregon State about two years ago, <laughs> moved to Woodburn, came started going to our church and met this wonderful young lady who was singing our praise band. And they were married last September. And this is a really neat thing for me tonight. But the best thing that's happened today was going to Silverton Hospital and seeing the ultrasound on Ian Bradley Judson, who will be here on June 5th. Chris and Cristobal. <laughs> Our sons turned out very well because they took the best qualities from Rhonda and avoided all my faults. <laughs> For me to stand up here tonight and accept this award by myself is really under false pretenses. All those things that Ward read off Every one of those things, when you see me out here in the community, you never see me by myself. There is always somebody beside me. We go to all these events together. I've gotten a little bit of 
comments about the fact that Mid Valley Bank might be sold and some comments about you too young to retire, but the most negative comments I got were, Rhonda's leaving the chamber? <laughs> <laughs> this is the person that uh, I was fortunate enough to define, and I have to say, my mother gave me a lot of good advice in my life, but the best thing she ever told me was, hey, Don, your cousin came out from Virginia to go to school at Willamette. Why don't you go look her up? Good move, Mom. <laughs> my wife, my life partner, love of my life, Rhonda. <laughs> and finally, the person who really made the person, the man you see before you. Some of you may know that my father died when I was only six, leaving my mother to raise my older sister and I. This is back in the 50s when Dr. Phil and Oprah weren't around to tell us how to be a single parent. You had to make it up. She found out she had a very good business sense and had a fantastic career at Marion County. She also discovered she had a wonderful singing voice, which she used in all of her activities in Eastern Star. But the most important thing she did was she taught my sister and I that we were very fortunate. We were very lucky. And it was our Christian duty to help those who were less fortunate. I tried to do that in my previous bank, but really had the opportunity when we started Mid Valley Bank, thanks to these people over here. A couple of years ago, I wrote her a poem on Mother's Day. I'm not going to read it because it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but the last part of the poem was, I've got a lot of praise from people in the crowd, but all I've wanted to do all my life is make my mother proud. That's why this night is important to me, because she can see me accept an award from all these wonderful people. This award that I'm getting tonight is a tribute to what she did to raise this crazy son of hers, my mother, Clarice Rossner. I'd like to close by sharing something that's very dear to me when we moved to Woodburn about six years ago, we said we would not become as involved in our new church. <laughs> it lasted about six months. We started a new contemporary service in the Methodist Church, and one of the songs we sing is called, Here I Am, Lord. It's based on the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 8, and the phrase is something to the effect that the Lord says, who's, who's will my messenger? And the response is, well, I'll do it. The chorus of the song, which I'm not going to sing, is, Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I've heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Every time we sing that song, it speaks to me. If there's a meth problem in this community, it's not Craig Kristoff's problem, it's our problem. If the downtown needs to be reinvigorated, it's not Mayor Figley's problem, it's our problem. If 214 needs to be widened, it's not Betty Comp's problem, it's our problem. If the schools are bursting at the seams and we need to build more schools, it's not Walt's problem, it's our problem. That's what that message says to me. We are the leaders of Woodburn, it's up to us. Several years ago, there was a little saying in the paper. It says, an executive is someone who never puts off until tomorrow what they could get someone else to do today. <laughs> They'd probably testify that's pretty true because that's what I do. I would challenge those of us in this room who are leaders of Woodburn, never put off until tomorrow what Woodburn needs today. Thank you for this honor. You have touched my heart deeply. wanted me to make sure to tell everybody that those mugs that are on the table are not to be left on the table there to go home with everybody. So make sure you take one with you. Um, we thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, we hope you had a, an enjoyable evening. Please drive safely on your way home and we will see you next year.